Hi all. Um, so in this video we're going to talk about um, NAT control. Uh, on the previous lab we talked about the um, significance of the security levels on the interfaces and how you can go from more secure to less secure without any access rules but you cannot go from less secure to more secure without access rules. You need to put access rules in place, right? Um, uh, well, again, we'll just talk about NAT control. So the, the newer versions of PICS as well as ASA now, um, no NAT control is the default, which means you don't need to have any NAT statements to get through the firewall. Um, in like PICS version 6.3, uh, 5 and earlier, you had to have uh, NAT statements. There wasn't an option for no NAT control. It was NAT control, but the default now in the ASAs is no NAT control. So if you do a show run, NAT control, you can see no NAT control is the way uh, it's configured now and that's the way it is by default. And so we saw last time that we could uh, connect from the uh, DMZ uh, server one host to the PC one host on the inside, so from less secure to more secure. Um, and all we had to do was put a, an access list, we still have it here, right? Show run access list. We have, we're permitting anything. Uh, we're putting full IP from anyone to anyone, and it's uh, bound to show run access group. It's bound to the DMZ uh, interface, right? That is DMZ ACL bound to the DMZ interface inbound, permitting anything. Um, so, just show you again one more time. So we can get from, for example, uh, our DMZ server to our internal host. No problem, right? Um, However, if we um, if we put into the firewall NAT control, so we enable NAT control, and if we do show run NAT con, you can see that the no is gone, right? It used to be no NAT control, now we've got NAT control. So we're using NAT to control uh, traffic that traverses the firewall. And so we'll go back and do the same thing we did just a second ago, and now we can't get there. Logging's turned on in, in here, I've turned it on uh, a long time ago. So you can see uh, no translation group found for TCP source, our DMZ host, 1010, or sorry, 2020, 2010, trying to get to destination inside host, 10, 10, 10, 10 on 80. No translation group found. So just a minute ago, we had no NAT control. We were able to get there because we weren't using NAT to control uh, uh, traffic that traverses the firewall. Now we are. So what we need to do is create some sort of NAT. I'm not going to get um, into detail about uh, the types of NAT, you know, static, uh, NAT global, NAT exemption. I'm not going to get into that in this video because we're just talking about the concept of NAT control versus no NAT control. Um, um, so we'll just I'm just going to create some NATs to show you that it will work once you create, um, create the rules. Um, but I'm not going to get into detail on how it works. We'll do that in another video. So if I create, for example, uh, NAT exemption. So if I do an access list... A permit um, what do I do I'm gonna call the access list uh, no net right and then I'm gonna uh, sorry I'm gonna make that a net exemption Okay, so I have some uh, NAT rules in there. Yeah, I'm actually, I've put NAT exemption for it, just meaning that uh, the DMZ host, 2020-2010, uh, can contact 10-10-10-10 using the 10-10-10-10 real IP. Uh, it's not actually translating anything. It's, it's you know, that's why they call it NAT exemption. I'm not going to get into the details on this video. We'll get into that later on. But you can see that now that I have a translation rule in place, we can connect. When we didn't have a trans rule, uh, translation rule, we couldn't connect. That's with NAT control enabled. When we had no NAT control, we didn't need a translation. We could connect because we weren't using NAT to control access through the box. Um, and I'll just show you uh, one more one more thing here. Um, it works both ways, right? So uh, let me do this. Let me let me remove. That no NAT because it because it's a rule right so if we do show run NAT so we don't have any uh, NAT control anymore <clears throat> so we can we can go also now uh, well we shouldn't be able to because we have NAT control enabled we shouldn't be able to get to 2020 20 
0.10 on 80, which we could do when we had uh, um, no NAT control, the default enabled, right? Uh, we can't anymore because we changed that to NAT control. And if you look in the firewall log again, it's gonna it's gonna say no translation group, right? No translation group found for source inside 10 10 10 10 to get to the DMZ destination 20 20 20 10 on 80. No translation. So we've already got our NAT exempt rule. I'm just gonna apply it again and show you that NAT inside zero access list. We had the access list called no NAT. Now if we go to the inside host, you can see it works right so no net, uh, show run net control so again no net control here means you don't need to have any uh, net statements uh, any any kind of translation statements in the firewall to have traffic traverse the box but when you enable net control so you, the, the command again uh, net dash control you hit enter and when you do show run that control you'll see the no is gone and it says NAT control just like it does here now we need to have a NAT translation uh, in the firewall for traffic to, to traverse it and it doesn't matter anymore if it uh, you know we talked about security levels on the interfaces in the last video it doesn't matter anymore if you're going less secure more secure more secure less secure whichever way you want to go if you have NAT control enabled you have to have a NAT translation in the box um, in order to get through it Okay, hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, you know, leave them on YouTube, and I'll I'll try and get back to you on those. Thanks a lot.